leaders, real life leaders. I think we all need accountability partners and we all need cheerleaders, but they're never the same person. That's right. right. Yeah. I think that guy needs to be a tough guy. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of a Real Life Leadership Podcast, where we share real life stories from real life leaders to help you become a better leader. And I'm so excited because today we have Wally Schmader, who is the founder of Exceptional Leaders Lab, and he's a two-time best-selling author, and he's also the chair of a Vistage CEO advisory peer group that is absolutely amazing. So welcome, Wally. Thank you, Chantel. Happy to be here. <laughs> and we always have Heather Rimmick here with us. Welcome, Heather. Hello. And Brian Delolio. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Well, today we are talking about goals. It's the beginning of the year. Everyone wants to talk about goals. It's funny. I don't know what the statistics are, but it's kind of like everyone sets every all these goals by January, and I think it's like by February <laughs> that they're done with their goals, like they're not hitting them. But that's what we want to talk about is the most common mistakes when people create their goals. Um, who can give us some tips? I can start. So I, I think, Chantel, the, the most common mistake with goals is just not setting goals. Uh, most people don't take the time to do it. They say only 3% of people have written goals, and those 3% are 30 times more successful than those that don't. So I think just to start out with the idea of And that blows goals. my mind, yeah. honestly, that, yeah. that literally only 3% of people have written goals. And then it also says, what's the percentage of people who have goals, but they're in their mind? Uh, I think it's 17%, just mm -hmm. keep them in their head. But what I think is missing then, so if you don't have your goals, so imagine you're starting the year and you don't have any goals or resolutions, you don't really have anything to connect yourself to the future, right? That's your goals or what tie you to your future self or your future outcomes. And so I, I had a mentor once years ago and he had this quote that stuck in my head, which was you either have goals or you work for someone who does. Mm, I love that. If someone wants to like the best way for them to start their goals, what would you say that would be? Like if you said... What are some of, first I'd love us to share some of our goals. Um, if you guys will mind sharing, one of my goals is to um, visit the nursing home. And I literally put once a week and I put on Saturdays at 2 p.m. So that's one of the goals that I have. Nice. One of my goals is a, is a fitness wellness goal that I'm, I fell off track last year and I wanna get back on just trying to take a little bit better care of my body. And what, so what is the specific, measurable, and actionable goal that you have for that? It's um, really specific. It's something every day, either a jog or tennis or golf or weights, mm -hmm. but something. So seven every days day. a week. Seven days a week, mm -hmm. something. Not the same thing, because mm -hmm. I've learned about myself that if I, do, if I have too much repetition, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, I think I'm setting myself up for success. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. 2019, I wanted to take better care of myself. I'm always pouring into other people and... A you very really wise are. person said, you have to be able, you have to pour into yourself before you can pull in, pour into other people. <laughs> um, and so mine is to, is a fitness goal. So last year I really worked on eating healthier. So this year um, I wanted to add fitness to that. So my specific goal is that five times a week, I have to do 30 minutes of an exercise activity. And I measure that by my watch tells me when I've had my heart beat above a certain rate for 30 minutes or more. And I close that ring. It's like a, you know, I'm a visual, like I like to see it there. So I know that five times a week, I have to close that ring of 30 minute workout or more. That's very cool. Now, for me, mine is professional. Um, so, you know, I've achieved a master's degree in my field, but I'm looking forward to, you know, you know looking to try to improve and, and take my career to the next level. And so the next step for me is really gaining a certification called the SHRM CP, um, which is an HR certification. And so my goal is to have the prep class and the study completed by the beginning of the summer and then take the actual exam in the fall testing period. So... Do you have a specific date of when you have said, like, have you said, okay, I'm going to study for 30 minutes every day, or I'm going to study, you know, 30 minutes, three times a week. And by this date, I'm going to have the study materials done. And then by this date, I'm going to have the test done. You know, one of the things that I've learned about myself, and I think you'll appreciate this story, Chantel, is is kind of how I learn best, right? So when I first started with you, you challenged me to get my real estate license, right? And you told me, Brian, everyone does it online. It's like self-paced, it's so easy, you just knock it out, right? 
what I know about myself is that for me, the craziness of life, right, makes it so much more difficult for me to structure that like 30 minute study time per day. And so I did the on or I did the in person class to get my real estate license done. And so what I learned about myself is like that created the structure for me that I needed in order to be successful. And it and I knew I was going to the class on these dates at these times. And that's what I did. It got me through it much faster. So for the the prep class for the exam, I'm doing the same thing. There is a self-study option. I'm doing the in-person class through ODU on a specific schedule so that it helps hold me accountable to getting it. Yeah, and it's like like my mom, she always says all the time, she's like, know thyself, know thyself. She just like, and what that means is, is like, she, she would say it with the, like, the craziest things. So like, let's say... For example, for her, the know thyself, she loves Twizzlers. And so she can get like really out of control when she eats Twizzlers. So like if she, in her mind, she's like, if I buy them, forget it. Like the whole thing's going to be gone. So she'd be like, I'd be like, oh, do you want this? She'd be like, know thyself. No, I'm not getting them. <laughs> so <laughs> she's, got, she's got Twizzler goals, yeah. right? We should Twizzler all have Twizzlers. Yeah. So let me add some context for, for people who are listening that haven't done goals a lot. And I want you to think about, you're getting ready to take a weekend trip, right? You're going up to D.C., let's say. And what goes into the planning for that weekend trip, right? You know, you have to fill up the car. You know where you're going to stop. You know where you're getting gas. You know where you're going to sleep. You know where you're going to eat. You know when you're coming back. You know when you're leaving. You do all those things, right? And the thing happens, right? You get to D.C., you do your sightseeing, you come back. Most people won't take any of that time on their own lives, right? So if you decided you wanted to have a whole a good year, wouldn't that, wouldn't that deserve as much attention and time and planning as a weekend trip? Right. And yet most people don't spend as much time on a whole yeah. year as they, as they would on a weekend road trip. So yeah. Ollie, like we have so many people. Yeah. That that, hold on, Brian. Yeah. That, 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 I want people to really hear that because that, I don't remember who it is, but someone has that as their quote. They say people spend more time planning a weekend trip than they do planning their entire lives or even the entire year of their life. It's crazy, isn't it? So, you know, the question is, We probably, we have so many high achievers that listen to this podcast, right? Who have all these things that they want to get done. How do you, how do you start? What do you focus on? How do you know if you have 12 things that seems overwhelming to even start with? Yeah. Well, you start with a magical question and I'm going to tell everybody what it is. So write it down. The magical question for setting goals is you take your, we call it casting forward so you can look back. So let's all go to Tuesday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, 2019. Is everybody there? Now think for a second, what would have made it a great year, right? What would have made 2019 a great year for your family, for your profession, you know, everything about your life. And those first few things you write down are your most important goals, right? Where you can say, this was a fantastic year. I did important things in my family life and my work life, right? That's the question. So we call it the December 31st question because it immediately puts you in that place, even if you don't consider yourself to be a really good goal setter. So even if I have this list of 12 things, the first kind of one, two, three that pop into my mind, I'm kind of automatically kind of figuring out what's most important. Yeah, and professional, you know, really experienced goal setters like Chantel and some of the other people I get to work with know this interesting thing, which is at a certain point, too many goals is bad, right? The 17th goal actually is going to keep you from making that third goal happen. So that's a good point. How many goals do you feel like is the right number that, you know, like, for example, they say, I've seen different studies where they say, how many people would you say is the right amount of people that you have as direct reports underneath you? What would you say that number is? Seven is what the yeah. experts so, say. So yeah. some people say seven, some people say eight. I think the max I've seen is 10, where people say you can have seven to 10, but seven is kind of that ideal yeah. number of underneath you. If you were going to say, this is the ideal number of goals that you should set, what would you say that is? I think it's five. Mm-hmm. Five that you'd put in the must category. Now, if that's like your main healthcare or fitness goal, right? not having 11 different goals around that. Because if you can't get to the first or second, you're not going to get to the eighth or ninth, right? And you don't want the all those eighth, ninth, tenth goals to put risk into you hitting those, like the one that you just shared a minute ago, right. Heather, that goal, additional health and fitness goals would put that at risk, right? right? So you want to narrow down and say, no, 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 I'm just going to make sure this happens. Right. And then all kinds of other good things will happen because of right. it, right? Yeah. And well, let's lo- talk about the categories. Yeah. So what those categories are, and let's come up with what, what your goals are or any goals that you know of, of stories of people that have set those goals. So obviously one is financial. Right. Um, 
Does anyone want to share one or one yeah. that someone knows we of? We talked about health and fitness, right? Just some wellness goals I think are, are smart. And a lot of things come out of those. If you're doing good things around your wellness, there's a great chance that it's going to affect what you do at work and what you do with your family. So that's a, a good one. You know, I think from a financial perspective, it's really kind of sitting down with your spouse or significant other and really kind of understanding on December 31st, where do we want to be? You know, right. is there a vacation we're saving for? Is there a student loan we're paying off? Is there a car that we're paying off? Like, and then kind of working back, how do we get there, right? right. We're going to use this particular app every week to track our progress yeah. and figuring out that process. And I'm glad you brought that up, like spouse or significant other, because I think it's important that you set goals with your sub your spouse or significant other at the beginning of the year. Like I've even seen people take retreats like, Wally, I think you do that with your spouse. We've you got can a, do a little retreat away. Yeah. It's, we call it destination goal setting. Right. And uh, for now, this was our 17th year together going somewhere in the world to set goals. And we've been crazy places. Been to New York city a few times, Costa Rica, Mallorca, Spain, London, Seattle, Panama. We went to Asheville. We could, took the Coast Starlight train from Los Angeles up to Seattle last year, setting our goals on this train ride. And what's amazing about it is you're, you're going for the purpose of, I mean, is setting goals for a whole year worth a weekend? Right. Of course it is, right? No one would argue with that. So making it a family tradition and one of the things uh, that maybe some of you have discovered is kids are the best goal setters there are. They're, they're naturally great at it. So you want to involve your family, especially if you've got kids. They're better at setting goals than adults are usually. So. Yeah. I actually did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We did that this year for the first time. And, um, and I did was sat down with my kids and I was actually really surprised at that. They actually set goals. So I have an eight year old and a five year old and I kind of like, you know, gave them some examples to kind of get them started. And I was really like, once my eight year old got going, like he was just, you know, next thing I knew, he's like, yeah, I'm going to run a mile three times a week. And I was like, who are you going to run a mile with? Cause now I'm going to have to get involved in this goal. Cause I just can't yeah. let you run a mile by right. yourself. And so, you know, it is really, it's really exciting to see how you develop them. But I do want to talk about something else. Like we see the high level goals, but I know as a leader, it's really important to coach the people underneath of you. And that's why when Chantel was talking about the specific actionable and measurable, why you have to have them set out how they're going to get to that goal, because it's easy to say, did you get, you know, did you hit your five, you know, did you lose a pound this week, right? That's usually the goal. And then they say no. So then you have nowhere to go when you're saying, so like when I'm sitting down with like an agent, for instance, and I was, and I would say their goal was, you know, I want to ratify two contracts this week. And I would say, that's a great goal. So how are you going to do that? And so let's talk about what are you going to do every day to hit that goal? So then when I meet with them next week and I say, Hey, did you get your two ratified this week? They're going to say no. And I'm going to say, well, let's look at, did you do your action steps? And that's where typically you'll find their, their habits and their patterns. And that's how you correct them and help coach them to be able to hit that goal. Otherwise you're like swimming, uh, you know, you're, there's nowhere to go. And I think that's what most people trip up on in the goal setting process is the action step part, right? It's easy to sit here and say, I want to get two ratifieds per week, or I'm going to save for that vacation, right? But it's the action step part of that that's most difficult. Those specifics are what turn a wish into a goal, yes. right? People sit around and wish all the time. Wishes aren't attached to any kind of activity or any kind of specificity like, like Chantella talked about. You had mentioned uh, your charitable goal. I think that's a good category, right? A charitable goal mm -hmm. for your family or for your, I mean, the Brooklyn. And, and a lot of times you're not going to have that conversation in your family unless it comes up, you know, as, as a goal. We had one a few years ago in our family where when the kids were younger, we used to, we called bingo at the Ballantyne Senior Living Center in Norfolk for four years. Every Wednesday night, we went and called bingo and my kids, little, really little, but they learned all these great things. They weren't around a lot of old people, so that helped any senior citizens. They learned public speaking in front of a very demanding audiences. These ladies are serious about their <laughs> bingo, right? You got to get it right. Uh, and they have this great memory now of getting in there and, and you know, contributing yeah. their time to something important. So, Well, I have seven categories and we have a template that you can use that you can download in the show notes. And it has these seven categories. And I really like these categories because it makes you, when, when you just say to somebody like, make your goals, it's really hard to like think of them. So if you have a template, one is health, finance, two is financial, three is spiritual, four is leadership, five is family, six is household, and seven is career. So I'm going to share my son's goals of these, of what he had come up with, because he literally, I said, come up with one for all of these. And so for him, for health, he said, I want to go to the gym two days a week or play tennis one time a week. 
Um, so that is a very specific measurable goal for health. For financial, he said he wants to make one lemonade stand in the months of June, July, and August, and he wants to save $5 a week from his allowance and give 10% of his allowance to God and learn how to increase. His spiritual goal is to listen to a Stephen Furtick podcast two times a week. His leadership goal is to listen to a Craig Rochelle leadership podcast once a week. His uh, family goal is to not be on the phone more than one and a half hours per day on the phone um, so he can spend more time with the family. His household goal is to um, go to the grocery store with me once a week so he has more input on the grocery list. And his career goal is he wants to be a professional football player. So he wants to practice playing football at least 30 minutes every yeah. single day. So think about how sophisticated that is. So this kid has seven <laughs> categories of goals with specific and measurable goals in each category. I and mean, all of us adults could take a lesson from that, right? And Chantel's right. Having prompts by categories will help you come up with more goals. Uh, if you just say, here's a blank sheet of paper, write down your goals, Brian. Right. That's not the way you get to the best parts of your, of your head and, and thoughts. So yeah, the categories and think of them and then narrow them down like you did and it's smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to share their goals or good goals that they've seen? Like, like talk about the financial goals, Heather, of what we do with agents when we go to them and we say, okay, when we, like when we sit down with an agent and we say, okay, what do you want to achieve of what would, how would you walk someone through that? Either Heather or Wally kind of, why don't you guys role play that? So, yeah. so you, you're going to talk her through what her financial goals are. Pretend she's an agent and you're kind of her leader. Okay. So, uh, I would usually get a set on where the person is now. Like, how are so you doing? So go ahead and ask. So okay. So do it with Heather. how, tell me about your savings today. How are you putting money back? What are your goals around savings? Yeah. So, you know, as you know, I'm a commissioned agent. So, right. you know, Sometimes I have really great months and I have a lot of money and then some months are just a little slower. So I, you know, have, so I have to be cognizant of my savings. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I try to save, but things happen in life. Like, you know, I, last week my tire blew and I had to buy a new tire. Um, and then, you know, my kid got sick and had to do, you know, take them to the doctor, et cetera. So, you know, I, I definitely could be more intentional about it. It's okay. I, of course I'd love it to be more. Right. Okay. So you said a few really important things there. You said you set out to have some goals. You said you had a variable income. Mm -hmm. You said that it goes up and down. And you said you live in the real world, so things happen. Right. right? That's <laughs> so right. Those yeah. are things we all have in common. So I would say for those of you that, are, that have variable income, it's really important to have your savings goal be a percentage. Okay. And it's important to understand that it's harder to do it when the amounts are small. Right. When you have a hundred thousand dollar check, it's easy to put back that 10 percent. Right. Right. When you have a thousand dollar check, it's not that easy. But so that's when you build those muscles. So making it a percentage. So you do it when the amounts are small and when the amounts are large is really important. And you're building your saving muscles when the amounts are small because it's actually harder then. Does that sure. make sense? Yeah, that does. Yeah. And then I would think about like some future number that you'd like to have. Like uh -huh. if we could get to this and then, then backtrack it. So I'd like to have ten thousand dollars saved by the end of next year, whatever the number is, what that would take, right? So divide it by month, and then you can kind of reality check it and okay. say, can I do that in our lifestyle? Can I do that with our commitments? And then maybe you adjust it one way or the other. And to try to figure out how to make it break that yearly goal into a monthly goal and then turn it into a weekly goal right. is really the way right. to do it. And what about for agents where you would say like, okay, I want, because a lot of times people say, okay, I want to sell uh, 24 houses this year. Okay, but they don't put the action steps of what they need to get there. Right. Yeah. So th that's where we look at. So that's where I'll when I sit down with them and I'll say, OK, so you want to sell 24 houses a year. So that comes down to be about two houses a month. And then what do you have to do to sell two houses a month? So that's two out of the two houses a month. How many houses do you have to get under contract? OK, so let's say three, just in case we get, you know, one that has a financing fall through at the end. So you need three. How many clients do you have to meet with? to show houses to get three contracts signed a month. All right. So of the con of the clients that you're actually showing houses to, how many do you have to meet to get to that point? We work our way all the way back to how many calls do you have to make every day in order to meet that end so, goal? Ding, ding, ding. That's your leading indicator, yeah. right? And goals should always be aimed at that leading indicator. The thing you do that makes all the other stuff happen. That's why running every day can be a better goal than losing 10 pounds. Right. Because losing 10 pounds is just a thing, right? Running every day, you know whether you did it or not. 
right? Same thing with calls. Yes. And most of us are in situations where we have some numbers we can fall back on that are pretty reliable. And if you don't know those numbers for your work, probably somebody does, right? And you can ask them for the ratios, the recommendations to do what you need to do. Yeah. But that was a great example. And I think that, you know, having an accountability partner uh, is really important. So one of my goals under my leadership goals that I had was to do this leadership podcast every single week. And so I literally went to Heather and I went to Brian, I said, and Josh, and I was like, okay, this is one of my goals. My goals is to do a leadership podcast every week. I came in, I said, we're going to set it up next week is when we're starting it. Actually, I didn't say next week. I, I think we started it this week. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said today. We never do anything did I next say today? week. Yes. <laughs> I think I did it the next day, actually. Yeah, that's funny. I'm not a really a next week kind of person. I'm yeah. either a today or a tomorrow so kind of girl. Chantel is a is someone who is fantastic, and you guys know this better than anybody, at taking an intention and turning it into a real thing, like in a very short period of time. <laughs> right? And it can be ready, setting. ready, fire, aim, <laughs> yes. but it still happens, yes. right? Yes. Which, is, which is what you want. So that's and, a great and it's, example. It's just a matter of like, I think a lot of times people get into this thing of like, okay, let's plan it and let's organize it and let's figure out how we're going to do this and do that. And, yeah. and some of that is good. You need that, right? Yeah. But here, one, one of the things I love to say is that you can steer a moving ship, but you cannot steer a ship that's sitting still. That is true. Right. You cannot. Yeah. The, the, you can't steer one. So you've got to get moving and then you can start steering it. And like, go ahead and film the first podcast. If you don't like it, guess what? Delete. Right. Delete. Yeah. You don't have to air it. And you yeah. can learn from it. But, yeah. but get start getting out there and go, okay, here's the mics. We're filming this that, or uh, we're recording it. Done is better than perfect, right? And a lot of people get stuck on having things arranged and set up before they get begin something. Right? Yeah. But I do want to talk about accountability partners real quick, because you talked about how important it is to have an accountability partner, but you need the right accountability mm, partner. That is good, Heather. And okay, we, here we go. <laughs> because everybody wants an accountability partner that when they say, hey, did you get up at 4.30 this morning and do your workout? And you're like, oh, no, I was too tired. They're like, that's okay. Tomorrow's a new day. No, <laughs> that is not the right answer. Right. <laughs> the answer is get your booty out of bed. I listened to this guy he trains for Kevin Hart, and he literally said... When you say he trains for Kevin Hart... He's a trainer. Hart. He's like the, oh, the personal, yes. personal trainer. Yes. He trains okay. him, yeah. And have you heard him? His no, name no. is... Um, gosh, now I can't remember it off the top of my head. It's um, Boss. His name's Boss. Okay. I mean, That's when you have a name one. like Boss, like, yeah. come on now. Yeah. So yeah. I listened to him, and he said he was fired from his first... Like, one of his first training jobs was Neo, the rapper... I'm sure that's on your playlist. Sure. Probably, yeah. I, I was listening stuff. to you on the way yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, Neo, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. We got it. Um, but yeah. because Neo said, I, I'm high, like, you have to come in and wake me up every morning to, to train me, right? And he was like, I am a grown adult. I am not waking you up. Like, you either get up and work out or this isn't going to work out. And Neo said, no, you don't understand. I'm paying you to come wake me up. And he fired him. And he said that was the best thing that ever happened to him because he learned that people have to have accountability partners that literally sometimes physically pl pluck you out of bed. And that's what you have to have. If you have a yes ma'am uh, accountability partner, find a new one. Oh, I have a great story for this. So <clears throat> I had a personal trainer and he was the nicest guy you've ever met. And what happened was is like, I'm just getting older and I feel like everything's falling apart on me. And so like my knee was been hurting, you know, my elbow hurts, my wrist hurts, this happens. So I would go into him and I'd be like, hey, you know, my knee is really hurting today. And it was, I mean, I wasn't lying. It really was. And so he'd be like, oh, no problem. We won't do lunges at all. Or we won't do squats. We won't do this. And he just kept making the workout so easy that I was like, this is just not working out. So guess what? I got a new trainer because I was like, this guy, I need someone to be like, I don't care if your knee hurts or not. Now, I mean, not that much, but you know what I'm sure, saying? Sure. Like saying, okay, well, we're still doing squats, but we're going to tweak it like this, or we're going to still do lunges, but we're going to tweak it like this. Um, because if you get someone that's too soft, guess what? I'm not using that trainer anymore. I think we all need accountability partners and we all need cheerleaders, but they're never the same person. That's right. right. I, yeah. I think yeah. that guy needs to be a tough guy. So I yeah. talked over you, Brian. No, that's Ooh. fine. We need, to, we, we need to add that somehow in the show notes. That's good. We need cheerleaders and we need accountability partners, but they can't be the same person. Yep. 
Now, I was going to go back to, um, you know, your point around planning and organizing kind of before you start something, right? I, um, as Chantel very well knows, like to consider every angle before I make a decision. And sometimes you have to just move forward. So I had a mentor, because I would do this in, in previous uh, environments that I worked in, and they would say, Brian, you are stuck in analysis paralysis. Ooh, you I need like to that. like just get off of, you know, you've considered three or four data points, you need to move forward and take the risk, right? You're going to have some risk when you're rolling out a strategy, but you can't get stuck in that analysis. So you know paralysis. that about yourself, that you, will, that you can yes. get stuck in the details and not move on something? Yes. Okay, so yeah. that's that self-knowledge. It helps you set the right kind and of And here, work, Brian used to work at Apple before he worked at Chantel Ray and... It's yeah, like, I had to work at one of the most successful companies to qualify me to come to yeah. Chantel yeah, Ray. Exactly. So after five years at Apple, he was qualified. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. So, but anyway, that is one thing I would say. Wouldn't you say that I am really have gotten our whole leadership really on board with like, yeah, we need to plan. Yeah, we need to do some analysis beforehand. But at some point, we have to move forward and pull that trigger. And I think that's one of the things that you've helped me with kind of grow just on my own, right, is that you've told me, Brian, I'd rather you take more risk and have to backtrack later than, than do nothing, right? And so that has kind of helped push me forward in getting stuck in that a little bit less. Well, let's talk about if, let's say that, if your goals or your situations change mid-process, what's the best way to handle that? So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. I with this One of my goals is very specific, actionable, and measurable. It's go to the nursing home to visit someone in the nursing home every Saturday at 2 o'clock. Well, Saturday at 2 o'clock, I had a birthday party, and then Sunday we had like back-to-back -back parties. So it just this weekend, wasn't I wasn't able to do it. So I could have just easily been like, all right, well, I'm just not going to the nursing home this week. It just didn't work out for me to be able to visit them. I'm just moving on. But I'm like, no, today I'm going to the nursing home to visit someone. And on top of it, I already know I'm going out of town this weekend. So I'm adding another person that I'm visiting um, and bringing a meal to uh, that has ALS. So I'm kind of doubling up to make sure that I hit that goal. So what kind of suggestions do you have when when something happens that kind of throws you off from hitting those goals? I think it's not even when. So, I mean, it's going to happen. It's going right? to, if yeah. we're talking about a like, goal for a year, you're going to get knocked off track again and again. And I think that's part of just accepting that, right? I live in the real world. Things happen. And I think uh, in these goal-setting workshops we do, we call them lightning strikes. And that is just something that <sighs> big. We that need a hit. lightning strike. Yeah. <laughs> you got a sound effect for that? <laughs> Um, yeah, and you have all these great intentions, and maybe you're excited about some things. Maybe even have some momentum towards some things, and then something happens. You lose your job, or you, you have an illness, or something that knocks you out. And you just have to, to regroup, right, and know that, hey, if my goals can survive this, or if I need to make some adjustments, then that's great. Last year, a very personal example, I'm going through, we have a ton of family goals that we're going to do in and around the area here. My mom was living here. She passed away in the fall. Mm -hmm. And so... Everything changed, right? Everything about my work, everything about our family relations. We had all get together and double down on all the things that were happening around this. Did it change? I mean, do you think that affected my goals? Of, of course, right? Yeah. You had to come back and make some adjustments, still have a successful year, still say, okay, this 2018 was a year that moved us forward, but that's an example. It doesn't have to be that big to knock you off track, but I think just an awareness that Chantel said, this is going to happen, and I'm going to be resilient enough to make an adjustment and keep well, going. Well, and that's a good point. So let's talk about reviewing and modifying. Yeah, that's what I was because, say. Um, so for example, I started this year in January, and me and my husband went away to Florida uh, for Christmas to make our goals for the year. And we actually, our anniversary is coming up. So I told him, I was like, this is great. We're going to go back to Florida because it's freezing here. And um, we're going to do a, just a quick two-day weekend trip. And because we can literally get on the plane, get there in two hours, pay for one night of a hotel. It's worth it, you know, for us to kind of have a getaway and feel like we're getting away. But I'm going to review the goals again because I'd like to tweak them now that it's been a month since I've been doing the goals to go, okay, Am I happy with this goal? Do I want to change it? Do I want to tweak it a little bit? Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think too, so a lot of people call it the 411. So you have your one, like your one yearly goal, right? Or mm -hmm. we're talking about five yearly goals, but you have the, the yearly the ones. One. Then you have the monthly and then you have the weekly. But I think that quarterly at a minimum, you need to just do a check-in on your goals and say, where am I at and what do I need to adjust? Because 
we don't want people setting goals that you can never achieve because then it's like, like Chantel is the perfect example of a friend of hers that was playing. He's a tennis coach. I'm going to give your tennis coach example. Okay, perfect. So he's a tennis coach. His daughter um, was playing tennis and he was like, all right, I know how I'm going to make her a better tennis player. I'm going to put her in a league above her level because that's, she's going to play up. She's going to get better. So she started playing in all these tournaments and she lost every single match. And so afterwards, he was, you know, after a while he was like, how's it going? She's like, I hate tennis. And he's like, <laughs> why? Backfire. And he's like, he's, she's like, I lose every time. Like I can't. And, and it was such a great lesson because. Wait, let me add on. Yeah. Cause, Cause she's not telling the whole story. So, so yes, that's right. So every single match he won, he was like, she's got to play up. She's got to play up. She, she lost every single match. But then what happened was when when he put her in the right category, so let's just say, I don't know if you guys know anything about tennis, but let's say that she was a 4.5. She should have been a 4.0, but he put her in the 4.5. When she went to play in 4.5, she lost every single match. She is a definite strong 4.0. She should be winning almost you know, two out of three matches when she went to 4.0, but guess what happened? She actually started losing every match, even in the 4.0. Why? Because her self-esteem was so bad. She was so defeated. She was just like, I'm not going to be able to win. She had a bad attitude. Mentally, she was just a mess. So it took a while for her to get herself back on track to be that. Right. Yeah, I think that anything you can do, back to Heather's question around uh, bolting your goals down, right? That's going to help with probability. It's going to squeeze some of the risk out. So some of the things I've seen done that are really good ideas are checking them quarterly, checking them monthly, depending on what kind of goal it is, putting them on your refrigerator. You see that pictures of the thing. Um, you see people, I mean, if you're going to check them every quarter or every month, put it in your calendar. It's an appointment, right? Put it in there. It pops up and reminds you. I met a guy last week that did something I've never heard of before, but every year he's, his main goal, he makes his password for all his devices. So he has to type that stupid thing in five times yeah. a day. Right? He's oh, not like, what was it? Like, give uh, me an it example was a of thing. that. He's, it was, his password was lose 25. Wow. Lose 25 Ooh, in 219. Like but think about that. That's in your face all yes. day, every day. I've never heard that one before. But any way you can attach yourself to the goals and bolt them down, makes them more real, and again, squeezes some of the risk out of them, uh, right. especially if they're aggressive goals. This guy's probably changing his password everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> lose suck, 20 pounds. Yeah. Lose 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you do want to make sure you're winning, you know, two out of three times, because if you do set stuff that's too high, then it is discouraging, and you're, next year you're going to be like, I don't want to set any goals. Like, that was the worst year ever. I was yeah. just a big failure. Great point. But set some goals yeah. you know you're going to hit. Yeah, that right? you Nothing know that, are, that. that you yeah. can hit, that are still a stretch, but not too much of a stretch that you can't. Like, you want to build muscle, you want to stretch yourself, but you want to also make sure they are achievable. Right. right. And here's where your accountability partner can be of another kind of help, and that is, we call it a sanity check. Just getting a sanity check, saying, Brian, can you take a look at these? Maybe someone who's accomplished one of the things or a few of the things you want to do, and have them take a look. Say, what do you think? Are these, are these so, good goals? So let me go back to the tennis example, because I forgot to say this as well. So one of the things he said to me, was he said that you should be hitting t the tennis coach now. He said, when you know that you're in the right place, tennis-wise, as far as your league goes, is you should be winning two out of every three matches. So that way your self-esteem is high enough so that you're doing good. But if you're winning three out of three, that means you didn't stretch yourself at all. You need to bump up to the next category. But in general, two out of three you should be able to hit. And then you know you're stretching yourself, but you're also making it achievable. All right. Well, we are out of time. Any other last-minute tips that anyone can think of that uh, you can do that you can say, hey, this is going to take you to the next level with your goals. I would say just a last reminder that we want to be deliberate in our lives. We want to be intentional, and goals are a great way to do that. Yeah, and set them in every area of your life. A lot of people think of goals as just being fitness or business. Really, every area of your life, family, um, personal, intimacy goals, like all of Ooh, those. Yeah, Heather, you know. Are you going to share your intimacy no, goal? No, I am not. Got, okay. <laughs> okay. Isn't there a little goal. bit more okay. time to hear some of Heather's okay. intimacy goals? Okay. Well, I'm not going to share Heather's intimacy goal, <laughs> but an intimacy goal example could be I want to have sex with my husband five times a week. Like that could be a goal. Or sure. I want to have sex with my husband two times a week. That is a good goal, you know? So yeah. somewhere your Ryan's husbands are going to be, right as long as it's not a low number, your husband's going to be very on board with it. Make sure it's attainable, right? Yeah, make sure it's attainable. Yes. Attainable, actionable. 
Well, Wally, thanks again for being on the show. You are the master of goals. And if someone wants to learn more about you or your leadership books, tell them where they can find you. ExceptionalLeadersLab.com. Thanks, Chantel. Thank you. And thank you, Heather. And thank you, Brian. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Real Life Leadership. If you'd like to get the show notes or access more resources, log on to reallifeleaders.com slash podcast to get the show notes from this episode and any other resources we might have mentioned. And also, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to review or rate this podcast on Apple Podcasts to help spread the word. And if you have any leadership questions you want answered, email podcast at reallifeleaders.com. 